Hey guys, how's it going? So I wanted to talk about episodes three and four of Tuki Divar really quickly this week. We're not gonna make this a long video because I think I talked about it in detail last week. I think what sets Tuki Divar apart from other shows is that it's an emotion-centric show. It's more focused on the emotions that the families are going through in the aftermath of tragedy. And so we are watching some very nuanced performances from these very fine actors. So yes, if there's a critique of this show, it's that if you are into very quick, fast-paced shows, this might not be the show for you. But as far as quality goes, I personally am really loving the pace, I'm loving the performances, I'm loving the story. You know that I'm loving the show. So in episodes three and four, both families are struggling still to pick up the pieces. I think there's a really nice contrast shown between Sara and Vishal. Both are going through the same thing, but at the same time, Sara is given the liberty to shout and she has outbursts even if they're towards her siblings or she gets upset with her mother. She has that freedom to do so because of the way her mother is responding. Her mother is putting on a strong face even if she's breaking down in private. Even if Amna is naive and she believes that she will be taken care of by others, she outwardly has a demeanor of composure. She's holding it together for her family. Meanwhile, on the other hand, you have Vishal. Vishal is not given that freedom the way Sara has been given to display his emotions. Vishal has been forced to grow up overnight. He has gone from this happy-go-lucky, carefree kid. And because his mother, Sonanda, brilliantly played by Samia Montaz, has gone into depression, he is forced to not only handle everything in the household, but also take care of his younger siblings. He is there to take care of his grandmother. Um, there's a really beautiful but sad moment where he takes the kids to the park and he's sitting there on a bench with his grandmother and his grandmother begins to cry and he listens to her and then he hugs her and he's consoling her and you're just left wondering who is there to console him, who is there to take care of him. Vishal is really a character who has been very well written and the audience really has an easy time connecting with him. So of course it's not surprising to see Vishal and Sara turn to each other. At the end of the day, all they need is someone to listen to them. And so they know that the other is going through a similar situation. So it's nice to see that when Sara is crying over hearing about her potential marriage, she is able to express to Vishal that she wants to kill herself, even if they're just words. When Vishal realizes his mother is taking some very heavy medications, it's nice to see how he reaches out to Sara for advice. So it'll be nice to see how that grows over the next several episodes. I think if we talk about performances this week, there are three standout performers, one being Ahad Ozamir. Ahad Ozamir has always been a dependable actor. He always goes the extra mile for his roles. However, this time, I think Vishal is stealing the show. He has put so much effort into Vishal, and yet he has made it look effortless. There are so many scenes where he has to act with his eyes, and he is doing that brilliantly, especially if you look at the scene between Sonanda and Vishal, when Sonanda breaks into the room and scolds Vishal for playing music during a time of mourning. Vishal is still a kid, and he still wants to do things that kids are doing. He wants to do what his friends are doing but that part of his life seems like a distant memory to him now. And the way Ahad Wazamir has played this character really makes the audience want to reach out and give him a hug. Of course, Somia Montaz is just brilliant as Sonanda. It is so easy to look at her and think, what are you doing? Pick up the pieces and take care of your children. But at the same time, she is going through trauma of her own and she loved her husband so much She's just unable to pull herself out of that depression. And it's nice to see mental health being depicted on the small screen in such a sensitive way. It's also interesting to see that all of the resentment she held in her heart against her mother-in-law in her husband's lifetime is now being unleashed and the two are constantly at odds with one another. And last but not least, Munzer Sebai. He's always a wonderful actor to watch. This time around, he's just winning hearts as Dadaji, who 
is a man who has always been active, who has always uh, been fun-loving. He has always doted on his family. And now his son is gone and his daughters are unable to pick up the responsibility of their parents. Also credit to Samina Ahmed. Of course, she's playing her role wonderfully. So these two elderly people are now left feeling unwanted, unloved. And they are just wondering what's the point of life when even their son is gone. It's very hard to watch, but at the same time, they are both such great actors. Munzer Sabai really expresses this well, not only through his dialogues, but through his expressions. Expressions which show what a person is feeling inwardly when they were once active and now suddenly find themselves unable to walk amongst all of their other problems. I think Omera Ahmed's writing is always on the mark and she has done a brilliant job this time as well. I know some people noticed in my last video that I referred to Anurag, played by Baras Masrur, as Vishal's brother-in-law. Sorry, I do realize he is Sananda's brother-in-law. It was a blooper. Alright guys, I think I have covered everything I wanted to say about this week's episodes. I'm really enjoying the way the story is playing out and I think there's a lot more to unpack as further episodes are released. So we'll keep this conversation going. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.